This in the athletic, uh, one of the latest works from Jason Stark. Can this minor league pitch clock solve all of Major League Baseball's problems? There is a 20 second pitch clock right now in low A, the West League. Jason Stark joins us now. Rico Bronia, who is a manager of the Stockton Ports in the Oakland A's uh, system, is going to join us in just a moment. But first, we bring in Jason uh, in and on his own. Uh, Jason, great to have you here. 15 second pitch clock in, in low A, which sounds to me is like I love the pitch clock idea. That sounds fast. What did it do to the ball games with a 15 second pitch clock? Brian, it was incredible that from the moment they implemented these pitch clocks, uh, everything changed in that league. It used to be the California League. Game time's down by 21 minutes, and that wasn't even the, the, the most exciting part. The most exciting part was there was more offense and more action in less time. Wow, oh, hold and on. Jason, inside... stop one second. Stop one second. I want people to just see this and have this register. This is with a 15-second pitch clock. Before the pitch clock, three hours, right? Normal game time, yeah. which is what we're dealing with in Major League Baseball. With the pitch clock, two hours, 41 minutes. Jason, you don't <laughs> even have to get to, hey, that's not the best part. I like already, <laughs> like, so this is just standing around doing nothing time that's been eliminated, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I, you know, I watched one of these games, watched one of Rico Bronia's team's games uh, on minorleaguebaseball.com, and Brian, there is zero dead time and one thing I'm sure you've noticed I never hear anybody say we need more dead time in baseball right <laughs> this vacuums it all out of every game it's amazing pitcher throws the ball catcher throws it back throws another pitch right and that's how the games work and this this by the way Jason Stark saw it with his own eyes so did I if you go back to 1981 I know you had this in the piece I'll take it right from there the average major league game time Two hours, 33 minutes, 1981. I was a senior in high school, Jason, so I saw it with my own eyes. It could actually happen, and nobody's arms fell off or anything else like that. So there's <laughs> 233. Then it goes, as you see, it crawls up, and that, by 2011, we're in two hours and 51 minutes, three hours and nine minutes now in 2021. So that's, that's just, just that time being taken out of it. Uh, Jason, just before we bring in Rico, uh, did anybody complain? Did anybody say, you know what, I worry about injuries, it's hard to do? Did anybody complain about it saying this isn't, is, is there a downside to this at all? Uh, I mean, the injury data is something that we don't have, we haven't had enough time to study yet, Brian, but I, I talked to players, I talked to Rico, who's the manager in that league, and I talked to, to many people who went through the league and saw it with their own eyes, and every one of them said, this is an incredible experience to watch baseball games that look like this. You referenced 1981. Talk to Raul Abanez, who's uh, overseeing this for the commissioner's office, and he said, it reminds me of the games I grew up watching right. in the 80s. Right, and the game moved. And by the way, it was the number one sport in, in, in the country, in the world at the time. Uh, let's bring in Rico Bronia, who just finished his first year with the Stockton Ports. That's in the Oakland A's affiliate. He managed there in Stockton. Uh, Rico, it's great having you on the show. What did you think? Tell me what you thought of the of the 15 second pitch clock. Well, I, I have to admit, at first I was skeptical. Being a traditional old school baseball guy, I thought bringing a clock into baseball was, you know, just not maybe the best thing for the game. Uh, we had the uniqueness of not having a clock. That said, after a full season um, experiencing the clock, the pitch clock in Low A West, uh, I'm not only all for it. Uh, I would recommend it for every level, including the major leagues. And I, I know the obstacles and hurdles that may present there, but having been a player for a long time in the big leagues and, uh, and union rep and in the front office and scouting and all the things I've done, I would recommend it and suggest at every level of baseball it was just terrific for the for our games this year. All right, Rico, again, people don't remember that you're a major league player. So you, we will hear from major league players. I know I need my time. I got Velcro. I've got a process. I've got to think. What would you tell major leaguers about the benefits or what they might lose from this? What would you tell them having seen this up close? Well, I think it helps everybody. I think it helps the pitcher, the hitter, the defense, the fans. You know, TV, media, radio, it just, it helps the entire game. And I think any way we can, first of all, any way we can help the uh, entire game of baseball and bring it back into the uh, living rooms and seats and stands and stadiums of ever more people, that's just great for the game. But as far as the players go and, and the on-field personnel, 
uh, an athlete likes to work quickly, throw us, you know, you, you teach and preach to pitchers, stay on the, stay on the mound, you know, work fast, throw strikes. It just helps your team in mm. so many different ways. And this, this did it. Guys, we're going to watch something right now. I, we're going to see a three pitch at bat at the major league level and a three pitch at bat in the minor league level from low A with a 15 second pitch clock. Now, again, these are both three pitch at bats. I think we have Max Scherzer on the mound there for the Dodgers. All right, so we start the <laughs> clock and we're going to let this go. Jason, uh, now you've seen a lot of different games. You watch different games uh, fr from this aspect. As, as we just watch, it's Eric Cosmer stepping in. Um, Tell us what you saw about the pace and the pacing of, of play with the pitch clock as opposed to not. Brian, the word that comes to mind for me is rhythm. The games in Rico Bronia's league had a great rhythm to them. There was none of this stepping out, walking around, fiddling with batting gloves. The games moved. Throw the ball. There it is. Throw strike it out. Throw yeah. it again. Yeah, there, so yeah. low way, there's, there's the strikeout has happened. Meantime, time for a full screen, joining the 3,000 club, because it's like, hey, we got some stuff while Eric Hosmer goes for a walk. And Hosmer's not like the villain here. He's just a major league player. He went for a little walk, and now he's struck out. So there we go. So there's 17 seconds of just extra time that we didn't need. Rico, what were your thoughts? I'll get to Rico there. Rico, what were your thoughts as you watched that at bat? That's typical of what you see. Stay in the box yeah. and move, right? Yeah, I mean, hitting coaches want the players to stay in the box. Pitching coaches and uh, managers want the pitchers to stay in the mound. That happened. Jason said it. The catcher throws it back, throws another pitch. We just implemented flash signs everywhere. So you don't have to worry about getting signs from a third base coach. You, know, you got a lot of green lights, a lot of auto run counts. And you just, you know, you put stop signs with flash signs. So there's ways around it. You prepare before the game rather than during the game. Right. Which is proper anyways. Right. And it puts more of the onus on you as the manager mm -hmm. and your prep and everything else. And if you're good at your job, it will benefit you because other guys are not as good on the fly. I want to watch something else here. For, this is also, um, Jason, you can speak to this. The pace overall. Now, this is just time between at bats. We're going to watch a strikeout happen at the same time on the left. That's low A with the pitch clock. That's major league games on the right. And just, uh, Jason, does it speed up in ways we're not even thinking, meaning just the, the batter getting back to the box for the next at bat? Yeah, there's a clock on everything, Brian. There's a clock on how long the, the batter has to, to get into the box. And that that works between at bats, between innings, and every pitch. The batter's got to be in the box and attentive to the pitcher with 10 seconds left on the clock. Look at okay, this. Okay, so yeah. it all adds up. All Look of it. Look, I'm just watching. It's so 39, 40. The batter just steps in, and there's the pitch. So again, 18 yeah. seconds, and you get 18 seconds of your life back. I don't know, 100 <laughs> times or 200 times. <laughs> Jason, I don't want to forget because you were going that direction. I just wanted to stop and do one thing at a time. What was the impact on offense at this level with the pitch clock? Uh, I mean, this was the fascinating part of it is that it wasn't just time of game. Runs were up. Homers were up. Slugging was up. Strikeouts were down. Walks were down. Hit batters were down. So, as I was saying earlier, Brian, you're, you're looking at a game that has more action, more offense, and it takes less time. How do those concepts fit together? We're still not sure, but you know, Rico said this to me himself. You, you try out 10 rules in the minor leagues to see what works. Right. Maybe just this one rule fixes everything. Uh, you know what? I've said that for a long time, Jason, that this would, it, this would help in so many ways. And I didn't even think that it would help in all of these ways. Like if you said, is offense going to get better? I was like, nah, probably not. But it, but it seems to be. Rico, why wouldn't this occur then? And I know the timelessness of baseball mm -hmm. and we're playing out in a field in Cooperstown mm -hmm. and all that. I, I, I love all that. But you got to get back and play the game. What, why wouldn't this happen if they can talk to you and talk to everybody in the minor leagues? The, the initial obstacle, the initial hurdle, the initial breakthrough would be the only uh, detriment or, you know, the, the reason why it wouldn't happen early. Because once it's, once it's felt, athletes like to work fast and, and be in rhythm, as Jason mentioned, and, and, and the fans and everyone will be on board. So the only, the only uh, problem I foresee was actually starting it. If it starts, it's on because it's just tremendous for the game. I mean, everyone likes, all players, like, you know, they hate it when pitchers work slow mm. best, is the best way to say it. So the initial, uh, the initial hurdle. I think once that's crossed and cleared, uh, if it is, hopefully it is, uh, it, it, that will, that'll be the end of it because it'll happen.
Excellent. That's such good news. I'll leave it at that. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll say Grant Brisby, sports writer, years ago did a study of a game in the 80s and uh, a game this a few years ago that he wrote this, and he found almost exactly, Jason, 20 minutes, I think it was 20 to 22 minutes yeah. of just stepping around time, dead time, <laughs> doing nothing time, and we can get rid of that and get that back in our lives every night as you come back. Fantastic. Rico, great talking to you again. We'll do it again sometime. You Thank too. you so Thank much. You.